Elevate Nights, if you're here for the first time, uh, welcome. Great to have you here. We'll do a whole guest welcome thing later, but I want to get into the word tonight. Um, Elevate Nights is really a night where we're saying we want to elevate our life. We want to elevate our faith. We want to elevate our walk with God. And um, I'm, I'm praying that tonight that we would have this uh, capacity to want to stretch ourselves just a little bit more and to grow. And to not be these type of people or Christians that, um, that kind of treat church very casual. But that we actually come here knowing that there's a God who desires for us to know him deeper. To know him greater. And I know that when you're facing things, when you're facing challenges, it's not easy to do that. When you're in the middle of a storm, when you're in the eye of the storm, it's not easy to have faith. It's not easy to smile. It's not easy to give God a shout. But I have learned that that worship and praise, it avenges my enemy. It really does. I mean, we just worship for one hour. It's 8 o'clock, guys. Did that feel like an hour? If someone said yes around you, just smack them right now. Just you know, what's wrong with you, man? Are you local? Let me give you a quick little point real quick. Everybody say this. Less is much with God in it. I want to start with this, this word right here. Less is much with God in it. We always want more. But God can do more with less than he can do with all the more that you want. God can do more when he's in it. You'll do less when God's out of it. And so I want to talk to us tonight about the real struggles that we face as believers, as followers, or just as people in general. And um, I was thinking about a perfect example, a guy by the name of Gideon. Gideon, I'm not going to go into all his verses and everything, but I will read one verse out of that, and then we're going to run. Gideon is a man who is basically a coward. He's afraid. You had all the uh, Philistine armies chasing Israel, killing the people of Israel. Every single time that Israel was trying to progress and be better and, and just receive the promise of God, it just seemed like there was always an enemy rising against them. Have you ever felt that way? Like you feel like you take three steps forward, but you take five back. You feel like you're getting just a little bit better, whether you're dealing with an emotional you know, challenge or whether you're finally conquering anxiety, depression, or maybe you're, you're getting your family together. But it just seems like every time you try to get better, every time you feel like, man, I, I got a grip on my faith, something happens and it just kind of, it, it just kind of puts you right back into that old place of defeat and, and, and feeling disappointed or disillusioned, whatever it may be, all the disses. And Gideon is, uh, is someone who is just sick and tired of, uh, of seeing all the chaos with Israel. I mean, he was a believer, obviously. He believed in God. He loved God. But I, be, I believe that that Gideon had maybe some of the same challenges we do sometimes where we're facing something so horrific, whether it's a crisis or a challenge, and we can ask ourselves sometimes, well, where is God in all this? Well, if God is so loving, then why would he allow this to happen to me? Have you ever asked yourself that question? If you haven't, you will one day. And Gideon is he's in a, he's in a wine press, and it's not that... The wine press wasn't even his, even his job. It wasn't even his type of career. He was just working in a wine press. And uh, all of a sudden, an angel, the Lord, shows up. And what's beautiful about this is that when God wants to move on your life, just, just have this, this capacity to believe that he can do it in a supernatural way. Because so often we can be so natural-minded that we're waiting for someone to come and be the answer. When God wants to actually have an, a, a, an encounter he wants you to have an invitation for him to show up in your life in such a way where, where nobody gets the glory but God. When people ask you, well, how did you get out of that situation? Or, or how did you overcome that? Or, or how did you get this far? You can say, well, you know what? An angel of the Lord met me. And an angel of the Lord met him. And, he, and you know what he called him? He called, the angel of the Lord called Gideon a mighty man of valor. Gideon was like looking around like, who are you talking to? You know, valor. What does valor mean? Nobody knows. Okay, God bless you. Okay. It means that you're courageous. You got valor. You're, you're willing to, 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 to be a hero. 
You mighty men of valor, you. You powerful men. And Gideon was like, man, I I think you got the wrong guy. And just reading that story, it helps me understand that even when we sometimes see the less in us, God always sees the potential in us. God always sees the potential in every single person, regardless of your past, your pedigree, where you come from. God sees the valor in you. God sees the mighty man in you. God sees the mighty woman in you. Even when you don't feel it, God sees it. And I know sometimes people can overlook us. People can, you know, not be in agreement with us or not feel like we have the, the, the ability to do whatever it is that we want to accomplish. But God always sees the best, doesn't he? And so he's now talking to Gideon. He says, hey, you mighty man of valor, what are you doing in there? And so all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord is telling Gideon, this is what the Lord wants you to do. This is what God wants you to do. God wants you to gather up an army and he wants you to go and fight the enemy and the first thing that Gideon says to the the angel like well if God cared so much about this then why would he even let it happen to begin with and the angel responded well that's why we're we're calling on you so God is looking for a person or persons or people that will have the valor to respond to God when he speaks and so often we're sitting here in church, always hearing whether you attend Elevate or not, but if you're a church goer, if you're someone that's been in church, you've heard a word at some point. Maybe you forgot that word. Maybe it was a prophetic word. Maybe it was a word in season for you, but it's almost like the fear has gripped your life and you kind of forgotten or let go of that word and you're still waiting for someone to come rescue you. But the reality is that God is saying, hey, listen, I've chosen you. So he chose Gideon. Gideon already had a call of God on his life. So you can be in the worst place in your life right now and God still has a call on you. That's why the Bible says that my calling is irrevocable. My calling does not change. You change, God says, but I don't change. When I say I've called you to do something, you're going to do that. The question is, when will you step up? And so we know the story. Getting, he goes ahead and he starts getting like 32,000 soldiers. And he grabs all these guys. And then he brings them to God and says, all right, God, what's up now? I got my men. However, it wasn't enough because the enemy had 130,000 soldiers. So it was 130,000 soldiers versus or against 32,000 of Gideon's army. So Gideon was already freaking out. That's why I started with that whole uh, statement that, you know what, Uh, less is more with God. Where we always think more (laughs) is what we need in order to accomplish what we got to do. Why does God do that? Because he wants to get the glory and take it from you. He wants the glory. He doesn't want you to touch that glory. He wants you to be able to see the awe of God. And so now he has 32,000 soldiers and God comes to him and says, still too many. Gideon's like, what the? They have 130,000 soldiers, God. Did you not see? Did you not count them all? And God's like, too many. So Gideon gets all like what we do, right? We always get very crafty and creative, huh? So Gideon's like, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to go and just, get, you know, I've been so inspiring. I actually got them to follow me. So, you know what? I'm sure they like me. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to leave me. So he goes to him. He says, all right, I'm just going to go and just tell them, hey, who wants to leave? And then just kind of turn around and walk away. And then maybe none will leave. He goes there and he says, hey, guys, huh? I know y'all love me and everything. But, hey, listen, if you got to go, if you don't want to go fight, the army? If you don't want to go fight with me, these 130,000 men, no, no worries, it's all right. Y- y- y'all, can, y'all can leave if you want, but no big deal. 22,000 of them leave. <laughs> 22,000 of those men left and leaves them now with how many? 10,000. And so, man, he's freaking out. He's like, oh, my God. God, look what you made me do. Now I got 10,000. Everybody say this, less is more with God. When he's in it. <laughs> And God says, you still got too many. What the? What you? Well, I won't get, because I want to get into my message. That's just a kind of foundation there. Hey, listen, this elevator night, I can go anywhere I want with this bad boy. <laughs> I can have like three sermons in one. Is that all right? And so we know the story. Um, he gets to a river. You know, he says, hey, the, the, the guys that, that lick the water, you know, instead of like sipping it all properly, those are your men. He ends up with 300 men. So now it's 300 versus 130,000. How would you like to be in that position? But isn't that how God works? 
God will never work on your account system. He just doesn't. God doesn't work on what we think we need. And so now they're going to battle with 300 men, and they are kicking. See, when God is in it, you know that less is more. And so Gideon and his 300 men are putting a whip on the whoop of the enemy, and they are running like crazy, but there's too many of them. And so the enemy is running, and they are chasing the enemy down without any stop, without any relentless. I mean, these guys were relentless. They were, they were just like, like, have you ever seen a dog just lock him, his jaws on a bone? I mean, just like, just not wanting to let go. These guys were relentless. They were not going to let go. And they're chasing the enemy because there's just way too many to kill. But how many would think that, well, the obvious is, if everybody's running, if the enemy's running, then, man, the war's over, right? They're running. They're done. We're done. We don't have to run. But how many know that when God starts something, he finishes it? And maybe you started something this year, but you haven't finished it. And you think that I'm okay now. You know, I'm comfortable. I'm good. You know, I don't have to keep pressing. But I say this. I think right now, in October, we have to press all the more and finish what we said we would start in January of 2019. And finish this bad boy so we can enter 2020 with something new and not something old. It would suck for you to go into 2020 still trying to finish something in 2019. Are you hearing me? So they're pursuing. Ever say pursuing. So look at this. Go to Judges chapter 8 verse 4 quick. It says Gideon and his 300 men. Ever say exhausted. Yet Keeping up the pursuit came to the Jordan, and they crossed it. Gideon and his 300 men, exhausted, tired. Man, they're chasing the enemy. They are exhausted, tired. They just, they're just, have you ever been exhausted? Have you ever been just tired? And I believe that maybe there's some of you here right now. You're exhausted spiritually. You're tired. You might be facing something. The exhaustion is making you think stupid things. The exhaustion is making you want to throw in the towel. The tiredness is making you want to quit and give up. This exhaustion is making you want to just throw your hands in the air and say, you know what, I don't need this church thing. I don't need this God thing. I was better before God. And how many know that's a lie? But Gideon, Gideon and his 300 men were exhausted, yet they kept pursuing because the goal was to finish it. It said, and once they got to the Jordan, they crossed over. And I'm praying that you and I are going to finish this year and meet our Jordan, then cross over. We're going to finish some things that we haven't finished. We're going we're gonna to get to the place where we start looking at the fact that, you know what? I may not have it all together. I may not have everything I need. But, but less is more with God as long as he's in it. And so you see these guys, and, and, and one thing I can tell you, if Gideon was preaching tonight, man, he'd be preaching real good, first of all. But I bet Gideon would say to you, you know what? I have learned that I don't need everyone or everything I thought I needed. I really believe that Gideon would probably say that to us. I think sometimes we think we need everybody we need in order to accomplish something. But you don't need everyone. I think sometimes we can be so dependent of people, places, and things, and think unless I have this, that, and this, I can't accomplish it. But when God is in it, God can accomplish it with just you, him, his son, and his spirit. He can do that in you. I was telling Jeremy uh, tonight before service, I'm like, man, I said, if you would have if, if you, if you told me three years ago everything we're seeing with with uh, Ikez Global and then Zoe International with what we're doing with uh, human trafficking, I would have never thought that we'd be seeing the things we're seeing today. And it's beautiful in spite of us. Isn't that awesome when it's in spite of you? Like you ain't all that anyways, right? You're like, you're, you're, no education, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, just didn't go to college, didn't, definitely no natural smarts. It was all developed by who? Holy Spirit, you link up with God, you, you start getting intelligent. 
and I was telling him that uh, I got a call right before service, uh, which was awesome, and because, you know, we keep saying, like, okay, how are we going to do this Zoe International, Mexico, and how's it going to work out, you know, because we don't have all the pieces to the puzzle. It's already a difficult country as it is, but, you know, tonight uh, we got a call saying that, hey, on Monday, um, Telemundo, which is, you know, major network here in America, wants to interview us regarding Zoe Mexico, which is pretty amazing. Everybody say this, less is more with God. Right? And so sometimes we don't know how it's all going to work out. Hey, listen, I didn't even arrange that bad boy. I just got the call, right? So, so sometimes we're thinking that we want to control how this is all going to work out. But God's already working behind the scenes, just like he was already working behind the scenes when Gideon was hiding. God was already on the move. God was already working something. God was already preparing something. And so we'll all reach a place in our life where you're going to be exhausted, frustrated, anxious, sometimes even feel a little bit depressed. But here's the thing. But you have to keep pursuing. Like it's okay to be exhausted as long as you're still pursuing. What am I pursuing? Am I pursuing my dream, my career? No. Listen, I'm exhausted, yet I'm still pursuing God. I'm still, like you made it tonight. Some of you didn't want to come to church tonight, but you made it. That was your, but I'll keep pursuing. I'll keep pressing. I'll keep pushing. And we can all be exhausted in any point of our life, right? Like there's times where you get tired of your kids, huh? I love my kids. Anybody, parents, you ever get tired of your kids? Like, man, I, like you love them, but you're like, man, like tired of like trying to help them, tired of trying to, you know, Proving that you're right, they're wrong. <laughs> you get tired, right? How about you get tired of your boss? Oh, see, so you got a lot of amens right there, man. For like, amen. I'll, I'll, I'll. You hit the nub. Yeah, you're tired. You're exhausted of people. Tired of people. You ever get tired of people? Right? Man, where there's people, there's an opportunity to forgive them. Amen? Yeah, you get tired of people. Maybe you get tired of living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you're tired of making the same dollar. Amount. Maybe you're tired of, your, of working the same career. I took an Uber tonight, and I was talking to a person. This person said, I hate my job. And I said, well, why don't you do something about it? Oh, I just did. I just shifted careers. I said, oh, that's awesome. Well, you went for it. And this person said, but yeah, but I'm scared. I'm like, well, that's the, that's the fun part. That's the exciting part. Because you're tapping into the unknown, but you're willing to do something about it. And I just sit there and be miserable the rest of your life. If you weren't here for going to the moon part one, you better go listen to that message. How about tired of myself? Man, I'm always tired of myself. I am. I get tired of myself. Like, what's wrong with you? Look at yourself and be like, I don't like you, man, right now. You know? Why are you dressing like that? Change your hair, Maurice. You know, have you ever get tired of you? You're tired of your attitude? Tired of your complaining? Like, that's sad when you're tired of you complaining. That's, that's when you know you reach exhaustion. Like, you're, so, you're tired of hearing your own voice. Just complaining, bickering, never happy, not satisfied. You ever get tired like that, exhausted? And how many know being negative will exhaust you? It will zap your strength when, you, when you're always negative, but, but nothing good ever happens for me. And you just, it's just, you exhaust everybody. Praise Jesus. How about tired of believing? You ever get tired of believing? Like you've been standing for a miracle. You've been standing and believing for a breakthrough in any area of your life, whether it's your family. And, and you're just tired, man. I'm tired of believing. I've been with people when they're in their deathbed and they're like, Pastor, I'm just tired. I'm ready to go home. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah, I'm tired. And then there's others that are like, yeah, I'm tired, but I want to live. I'm like, okay, well, let's live then. See, you're exhausted, yet you're still pursuing. You're tired, yet you're still pressing. You're tired, yet you're pursuing more of God's presence. So Gideon's like, we're exhausted, but we're going to keep the pursuit because we're going to cross over. We're going to keep the pursuit because God promised us something on the other side of the Jordan. We're going to keep this pursuit because we know there's a breakthrough right across this Jordan. 
Just like Jesus when he said, let us cross over to the other side. There was a demonized man on the other side, broken, hurting, in a cave. And, of course, the moment they went to the other side, they got hit with a storm. Listen, the truth is this, is that when you are pursuing the things of God, you're going to have to accept the fact and the reality that there's going to be seasons in your life where you're going to feel like you want to give up and quit. It happens. Look, at the Apostle Paul understood this very well. When you think about the Apostle Paul, this guy was always tired of being beat for preaching the gospel. He was tired of being in jail and cold with no covers. He was tired, I'm sure, of always running from the enemy who wanted to martyr him. I'm sure he was tired of, you know, eating, uh, uh, what's that bread thing called, that tortilla thing that... Uh, Manna. I'm sure, I'm sure he wanted some carne asada, you know, or something. Like, tired of not, listen, how about this? Tired of not having his own pillow where he can lay his head on and rest. Tired of not having his own house. Because he was always going from city to city, to city to city, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was so tired that in the moment he's in prison and he's crying out to God. He's praying. He's praying, Lord, please take this pain from me. There's a thorn on my side. And three times he prayed, and the Lord did not respond to him. Until he finally, he said, Lord, please. He said, hey, listen, my grace is sufficient for you. When you're weak, that's when I'm strong in you. See, it's it, when I'm exhausted, when I'm tired, is when God kicks in and he says, okay, I'll make up the difference now. Where you can't, I can. Can you imagine? You ever, you ever feel that way? Look at Galatians 6, 9. This is what Paul says. He said this to the church. He said, hey, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. Sometimes people, Christians are always like, oh, I'm tired. I think I'm going to stop serving. Or Like, listen, there's times where you just stop serving. I, I'm not trying to hit on anybody, okay? I've, I've been in ministry for 20 plus years. I've heard them all. I'm like, okay, um, I get it. Like, but what's the reason? And, and you start hearing some really goofy reasons, you know, like really goofy. There's, there's serious stuff. There's serious reasons, and there's goofy ones. Because you just get tired. Just tired. Just like, I'm just tired of serving. I've been serving it for nine years, man. Since we opened the church, I'm serving. I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> well, Jesus has been faithful for 2,000 plus years, right? And he's not tired of us. Just tired. Right? Like, I don't believe in retirement for me personally. If, not, if you're retired, God bless you. Come volunteer. <laughs> but for me, like, I'm thinking... I, I'll be with a cane, old, and, uh, you know, move, Isaac, Alexis, move out of the way. I'm going you know, to, you, know, you know, come up on stage, you know, and throw a little word in there or something. You know what I'm saying? But, but listen, he says, but do not grow weary while doing good stuff. How could you get tired of serving God? How could you get tired of serving people? How can you get tired of being kind? How can you get tired of loving people? How can you be tired of winning people to Christ? How can you get tired of your faith? How is that possible? Well, it is possible. It's called exhaustion. And I get it. There's, there's time to rest. There's, I get all that stuff. There's a balance. I get all that stuff. But I think that most of us, we tend to sway towards more of the I'm tired, and I just, I'd rather just stop. But, but you know what? But it doesn't, it doesn't help you. It, it really doesn't. Uh, for 23 years, I have, I have not stopped serving Jesus. It hasn't stopped. Do I feel exhausted sometimes? Heck to the, yeah. There's some elevated nights. I don't even want to be here. I really don't. Like, there's, there's, there's been some services like, man, I don't want to preach Sunday. Why? I'm tired. It's exhausting traveling. It's exhausting, you know, work. It, it gets tiring, but guess what? But I know my call. And when you know what God has put in your hands to do, you have to go ahead and just decide that, you know what? I'm exhausted. I'm tired, but I'm going to keep pursuing because I'm going to make it to that Jordan. Are you hearing me today? And so Paul says, at just the right, oh, let's finish that. So he says, um, do not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time, or say just the right time. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Look at your and say, don't give up. <laughs> say with an attitude now, don't. Now use the 102 muscles in your face. <laughs> Frown at them. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we get tired. I, you know, and I, I, think, I think when we think about tiredness, it's kind of goofy for us too sometimes, I think. Because I don't understand why we pay gyms and sometimes trainers to get us tired. <laughs> like, have you ever thought about that? Like, like, I'm actually paying people to get me tired. <laughs> you know, you go to the gym and, um, you know, you have, uh, you have these trainers and they're yelling. And, and we're pay people, we pay them to yell at us too. <laughs> Right, like, shut up, you can do one more, you know, you know like, yes, yeah, but I remember when I had a trainer, and, um, and uh, I was trying to hit a goal, and, um, and man, but this guy was good, I have to say, there's been some trainers that are weak, you know, that, that I've, you know, had in my life, but this guy was like, man, he was not gonna let you go, like, there was no, like, oh, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Oh, well, throw up. But you're, you know, it's like one of those guys, right? Like, how do, you know, throw up while you, you know, do the next push-up. But I'll never forget this guy. was He was really good. And, man, he was so good. Like, I was getting fit, like, quick. Like, man, I started getting my little, there was a six-pack in there at one point. But, but, like, man, I'm like, wow, like, cut and the whole thing. This guy was, but I remember, like, there was a time where I was lifting my weights. And, and I'm like, ah, and I'm like. Good. Ah, ah. And then I got to a point where I was getting tired and exhausted. And he's like, come on, one more. And I'm like, oh. and I'm like, like this. It's like, it's like, like I'm, not, I'm about to tip over with this bad boy. He's like, come on, push, push, push. And he's like, like literally yelling at me to push. And come on, you can do it. One. And then he grabs his little index finger as if. And he's like, come on, come on. And he's like pretending he's lifting it for me. And I'm like literally doing this, like. Wow, I can do it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, do that again. But at the end of the workout, he was like, hey, Mauricio, uh, he's like, you know I didn't help you lift that weight, right? I'm like, seriously? He's like, no, and that's when I realized that, you know what? It's more of an encouragement to say, come on, I'm with you. Keep going. And that's what God is saying to us tonight. Hey, listen, no matter how exhausted and tired you are, I'm with you. Because here's the reality. And this is a point that I want you to write down. If you can't write it down, be great. The only way to increase your capacity is allowing yourself to get exhausted and tired. The only way to increase your capacity is to allow yourself to get exhausted and tired. Maybe you're at the point of like, you know what? I just want to quit. I just want to give up. I just want to stop serving. I just want to stop giving. I just want to stop working. I want to stop. I don't know what your stop is. But maybe that's what God's trying to put in your life in order to increase your capacity just to go ahead and take one more rep, to push one more time. Maybe you're at the edge of the ledge of your strength that's going to help you finish this year in order for you to step into 2020 with greater vision. But you got you to do your part. You can't just be like, oh, I can't no more, and just, just drop the weights. Like God's like, no, pick up those weights again, and we'll lift it together. Look at what Philippians 4.13 says. It says, I can do all things through who? Christ who gives me what? Strength. So when you feel you can't, no, you can. You can in Jesus. You can on, alone. I, I would probably agree with you. You can't, but God can when you can't. And that's what I love about God. And so you might be tired, but there's still more to be done, guys. You might be tired, but there's still more to be done. Look at your number and say, you know, you're probably exhausted, but there's more to be done. There's more to be done. I love our staff, but I think sometimes I tire them. No, thank you, Stephen. I have more work for you tomorrow. Bring it! <laughs> but, but you know what? But, but here's why. Because there's more to be done. If you know you're called, then there's more to be done. There's either more to be done or you're done. And not just the body of Christ, but in the world. And we live in a culture of quit. When, the, when it gets tough, people tend to quit. You know why? Because there's no effort in quitting. There's no effort. There's no weight in quitting. If I were carrying that bench, that, that, that weight on that bench, if I, want, if I didn't want no more weight, I just have to drop the weight. 
but pushing that extra press helped me to do it one more time. What I thought I couldn't do, I can actually do. One more press turned into two more presses. Two more presses turned into five more presses. Before I knew it, I was already pressing. I started with just being able to press like maybe 20. By the time I was done, I was pressing 100, 100 reps. Why? Because God allows us to create the capacity to increase when we are tired and exhausted. That's why he told Paul, I'm giving you scripture. When you're weak, that's when I'm strong. But we don't find our strength in God. We're trying to muster up just another, just let me just have, let me have one more better attitude for one more day. God doesn't want you just to try to muster up a better attitude. God wants you to go ahead and keep pursuing him. And he'll give you the strength that you need. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for that? Hmm. Let me give you one more verse. So how do I get the source of my pursuit? How do I do that? How do I, when I'm exhausted, when I'm tired, like where do I, where do you drive from? Where do you get it from? Listen, there's only one source. It's God's word, but his spirit brings that word to life. How do I know that? Well, the only way Jesus was able to come out of that grave was by the Holy Spirit. So you can read your Bible and just read a word, but you put a little bit of Holy Spirit on there, you invite the Holy Spirit to bring that word to life. Let me tell you something. That'll be the source that keeps you going. That'll be the source that keeps you pursuing. That'll be the source that will not allow you to quit or give up. Even when you feel like it, man, God's word will convict you and tell you, no, there's more to be done. And then he'll also tell you, it is finished. And then he'll say, new mission. <laughs> Amen? How many, there's a world to be saved. There's family members that need to come to Christ. There's coworkers that have yet to hear Jesus. There are people that in your life, family members. So, so where do we think we take a break? Come on, there's that physical retirement of work, but there's no such thing as retirement with God. There's no retirement with God. You don't retire, God. God, I've, I've served you long enough. I've already done my time. Like, what the? Were you in prison? I'm sorry. Like, I've done my time. <laughs> Everybody say, God's word is the source from my exhaustion. How do I know that? Well, check this out. When you're sick of work, you get you open, you open your Bible because we have to start doing a better job of, of looking for the answers in here. Like the answer to your challenges right here, the area you want to quit on, the place you want to give up on, it's the answer is right here. And, and this right here is the fire. And the Holy Spirit is, is the one who keeps fanning that flame. But he can't fan you if there's no wood inside. So, so let's just use an example. Let's say, oh, I'm so sick of my job. I hate my boss. I can't stand. I, I don't like my coworkers. I'm just, oh, well, let's, what does the word have to say about my work? Here, here's what it says. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 through 24. Whatever you do. Work at it with some of your heart. A piece of your heart. Just, just try to like people. No, he says, you do it with all your heart. As working for who? Not for human masters, human managers, human supervisors, human pastors. Don't hate on me. Since you're mature enough to know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Huh? So when you feel like, I'm tired, oh, I just, I'm tired of work. You, you, what is, but what does God have to say about that work? Because I think maybe there's some people, you've quit just about every job because it got rough. You've quit every career because it got tough. Well, guess what? If you want to increase your capacity, then stay a little bit longer and watch God work out some character in you. Okay, how about stress, anxiety? Philippians 4, 6, 7 says this, be anxious for 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So you know what thanksgiving does? It changes your attitude. Like when you feel anxious and just sad, you just start, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Thank you, Father. Yes, thank you, Father. Yes, Lord, I'm, I'm a victor. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath, Father God. But you're not feeling it. It's, hey, listen, your feelings will catch up to God's word. You just have to just keep praying. Let's just start clapping them. Just tell them, thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for my situation. Lord, thank you that right now I'm being challenged, but it's increasing my capacity. Amen. I'm exhausted, yet I'm still pursuing you, God. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank him for whatever you're facing right now. Oh, Lord, man, finances are short. Man, they're, they're not the greatest, but thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, because you, you make a new day tomorrow. You'll give me new insight, new wisdom. Amen. Yeah. And you know that just to the devil, like, what the heck are you clapping about? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right? That's, that's it. The devil will be so confused and be like, wait a minute. I just, I just dropped the, the S bomb on you, the Satan bomb on you. And you are clapping? Are you kidding? You know why? eventually the enemy will stop trying because he knows he can't get you in that area anymore. Until you start having a thankful heart in that area, the enemy will just keep going and he'll keep pushing the buns. No, I'm th thank you, Jesus. I ain't worried about that anymore. No! And then something happens, right? So he says, but, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And look, and the peace of God, which surpasses all my understanding, because I don't understand it, God, will guard your heart, because out of your heart will flow the issues of what? Life, and he'll guard your mind, right? Because as a man thinketh, so is he. He says, through Christ Jesus. How about ideas? I need some ideas. What am I going to do? I need to be creative. I need, I need a miracle idea. I need a creative miracle idea. I need, I need a strategy. I need a process. Well, John 1. Verse 1 through 3 says this, in the beginning, the word was already there. We're looking for all the answers. God's like, it's already there. The word was with God. If the word was with God and it was good for God, shouldn't it be good for us? And he was with God in the beginning and all things were made through him. Nothing that has been made was made without him. So you need an idea? Man, hook up with God's word. He'll give you a creative idea for your business, your career, your family, your children. Uh, He'll give it to you. Oh, finances. Let's talk about that one. Finances. Deuteronomy 8.18, he says, but remember the Lord your God. Remember who? Remember who? Who's your source? Y'all too quiet. Who's your source? Do you honestly know that? Do you honestly believe that? Or is your check the Lord your God? Your pay, because how many know that you can have a paycheck now and not have it tomorrow? So don't put your faith in the paycheck. Put your faith in the Lord your God. That's what he says financially. Always remember the Lord your God. He says, look at this. For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant with his, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. The same God who provided then is the same God who will provide now and will be the same God who will provide tomorrow. And he will give you the power, the ability, he'll give you the strength, and he'll help you produce the wealth that you need. Amen? So don't just be sitting like, oh, I'm just poor. No, he gave you power to gain wealth. Do you believe that? Not everybody believes that in church. They don't. So we can stay frustrated. Or we can work hard and dig deep in these scriptures and remind ourselves, yes, I might be tired in seasons. I might be tired in, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year, but I'm still pursuing God. I'm still pursuing his word. I'm still worshiping. I'm still going to church. I'm still serving him. I'm still loving people. I'm tired, yes. But I remember what Paul said. He says, do not grow weary while doing good. For the time will come. The due season will come 
well, you, re- you will reap a harvest if, ever say if, stand to your feet, if you don't give up. If you're here tonight, every eye closed, every head bow. If you've been feeling exhausted, tired, weary, you feel like giving up. It's not a sin to feel that way, guys. It's a sin to give up. It's not a a sin to feel tired. It's a sin when you quit. If you need God to refresh you tonight, if you need God to enlighten you tonight, just to to stir your heart back tonight, listen, this will be a good jump start. But then you got to get home and you got to open that word. And you got to dig deep in that word so that the Holy Spirit could begin to fan the flame of that word. And all of a sudden, the logs are on fire, man. You're burning for God. If you need a fresh touch from heaven, when I count three, you just lift your hand high up in the air when I count three. And we're going to go ahead and just pray for every single one of you. I won't call you up, but we'll pray. We'll pray. Lift your hand if that's you. Go ahead. You've been exhausted, tired. You're just like, man, Lord, I'm tired. Father, you see our hands. You see our hands. You see those that are genuine, Father, where they're at right now. Lord, I pray that whatever they're facing, whatever challenge, Father, I pray that tonight that you would that you would recharge them, Father. I pray that tonight you're like that finger of that trainer that you just start helping us lift that weight just a little bit more, Father, because we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. So, Lord, I'm praying tonight for a Holy Spirit, a supernatural strength coming upon us right now. Come on, lift your hands high. A supernatural strength. I'm not looking for earthly strength. I'm looking for a touch from heaven. I'm not looking for another encouraging word. No, I'm looking for the angel of the Lord. Come on, I'm not looking for someone else to pat me on the back and say, great job. No, I look into Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. The one who says, you can keep going. The one who says, I am your strength. I am your peace. I am your exceedingly great reward. So, Father, tonight, I thank you as our hands are lifted. I thank you for injecting us with with power, Father, with Holy Ghost power to accomplish everything you've called us to, to lead our families, Father, to go to work and to love the people, Father. Lord, to help our children be the best followers of Jesus they can be, Father. Lord, help us to love the unlovely. Help us to love ugly, not just love those who love us. Lord, I pray that as we leave tonight, I pray that you would lead us to someone this week and that we would put our hands to work because we're not done, that we would share our faith, that we would stir up the hearts of those that are far away from you, God. I thank you, Lord. You said as I build your house, you said you'll build mine. So, Lord, I pray that this week, that every single one of us here tonight, you're marking us. And I pray that each one of us are going to grab someone this week. We're going to pray for someone this week. We're going to encourage someone this week. We'll be the index finger for someone this week. And we'll say, come on, keep going. You can do this. God is with you. God is for you. God loves you. God hasn't left you. I know a healer. I know a redeemer. Lord, let that be in our hearts. Let your love for people be the flame of our life. Let it be the source of why we wake up every day, Father. So, Lord, I thank you today. We're going to give you the greatest hand clap of praise. Because, Lord, without you, we can't do it. We need you, Jesus. And so tonight we're thankful for your strength for your peace and your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe that, give the Lord a big hand clap. Come on.